I'm sitting in the resource room of the chemistry department, which is under the School of Science here at Kenyatta University in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. There's uh, quite a bit of activity around here in the university, people walking around, but it's a quiet university compared to other universities in the city in that it's on a large tract of land and it has uh, open fields, lots of trees, and there's birds singing all around us as well. It is well known as a university where teachers are taught how to teach. Sitting next to me is Dr. Haran Mbuvi. Dr. Mbuvi is the chair of the chemistry department here at Kenyatta University. Dr. Mbuvi, what strategies would you consider essential in helping children understand science? I think uh, at the university, we are training our teachers to uh, teach our uh, learners through inquiry-based approach or learning where uh, the students or the learner is exposed. He observes, he's made to observe and make uh, conclusions uh, based on, on uh, what he observe. Uh, a good example is uh, exposing uh, the learner in science to an experiment that he observes and sees and then asking uh, the right questions so that you create uh, curiosity on the learner so that the, the learner would want to know why did that happen. Then uh, you can now uh, guide the thought process of the learner and uh, teach, teach the learner how to think rather than what to think. The other approach we use here is the through group teamwork the, by giving them a project that's a problem uh, solving uh, project could be an example of just uh, getting uh, uh, dirty water and purifying it or even extracting an oil from an avocado uh, then you let those uh, uh, allow them to find out how uh, that is done do their, their own research and then you, as a, as a facilitator of that learning, you will uh, expect them to come and present what they are going, uh, the process they are going to do to purify or to extract, and then guide them. So in that approach, you are more of a facilitator of learning rather than than the teacher. Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. I'm Oge Chieke Anyao. You just heard our reporter Michael Koloki discuss science education with Dr. Harun Mbuvi, Chair of the Chemistry Department at the Kenyatta University in Nairobi, Kenya. Fostering children's interest in science is crucial for lifelong learning. While technology offers global learning opportunities, and more children now have access to the internet, African children face some barriers in accessing the internet. According to the Association for the Development of Education in Africa, these barriers include limited access to technology due to high infrastructure costs, amongst many others. Yetunde Oluwa Tosin is an education specialist in early childhood development and pre-primary education at UNICEF Nigeria. She spoke to us about some of these barriers to learning in Nigeria and how they impact children's understanding of science. Okay, for, for Nigeria, uh, our national literacy rate um, is about um, 62%. At the moment, nearly half of women at 40, well, f women or the female um, at 47%, and then one quarter of the male gender are unable to, to read or write. So this learning crisis that um, Nigeria is currently in is stalling the significant gains that um, we may have, um, that we had started to make um, in getting um, our foundational skills up before um, COVID struck. Um, in Nigeria and, and also other parts of Africa, we face um, several challenges which hinder children from enrolling and also understanding or having any interest in joining in, in being part of um, a science class. 
the challenges are, are vast. We have issues around um, inadequate infrastructure, right? Our classrooms, even where we have the classrooms, the teaching and learning materials that are available um, for use to support teaching and learning are also inadequate, right? Or sometimes they are not relevant, right? Another um, issue is um, around limited access to educational resources, which kind of links to the teaching and learning materials, right? Especially in the urban, in, in the rural areas, right? Even in, in some urban areas or, or semi-urban areas, we, we might not have um, a, a lot of access to educational resources. Then there are cultural um, biases as well. We Well, in some parts, there's still the notion that some um, courses or subjects um, should be male-oriented and not um, for for the um, female gender. Um, that that is one, and um, I'm leaving this one um, for the almost last. That's looking at our teachers, right? Our teachers are very key for any teaching and learning to take place, right? For for um, the teachers that we have, we have insufficient qualified teachers, right? For for science related courses in the country, and them. Um, all of this contribute to maybe the low en enrollment for science subjects. That is all of that is on the side, right? In Nigeria currently, we are um, in the middle of a learning crisis, right? Approximately three out of four children are unable to read, you know, with meaning or even solve simple mathematics problem, right? Um, it for for children from the poor from poor households, fewer than one in 20 of them, and again, one in seven um, children in rural areas have foundational skills, right? The lack of these skills affects how these children are able to learn even high other skills. And also you find out that um, their risk of repeating classes or dropping out of school is very high, right? All of this fueling the out of school phenomenon. If you have a child, who is or, or a learner who is unable to to understand very basic um, literacy or numeracy, expecting them to go, you know, to enroll in sciences in the higher classes, you know, it becomes even much more difficult. And then um, you find out from um, I, just as I mentioned, is that the number of children who are not acquiring the foundational skills. Right, they are from the poorest, from the rural areas, or children whose um, mothers, in particular, have no education, and also relating to a particular ethnic um, background. All of these gaps, as they are there, it compounds the the problems for the learners as they progress through school. This means that some of these um, higher order skills or subjects are not so much so of interest, you know, to them because they are even unable to do the simplest of the simplest. Some researchers argue that students find science challenging due to its abstract content and complex formulas. Teachers play a key role in finding engaging methods to simplify in learning. Professor Sani Aliyu, a renewable energy expert at the Usman Danfodio University in Sokoto, Nigeria, shared some insights on strategies to enhance children's understanding of science. Michael spoke to him about the strategies that are needed to help children understand science. Actually, the most fundamental and the basic requirement is that of instructional materials. If you look at the level of the children, they required demonstrations and um, discussions along with the teachers so that they will be properly guided and they need to see things for themselves so that they can easily understand. Because at that level, their brain cannot capture things that are at uh, abstract level. So you need to use instructional materials that will bring their, that will arouse their, uh, uh, their interest and at the same time motivate them in science. That's so instructional materials of different types, depending on the topic 
to be discussed depending on the topic to be teach at a particular time is very very essential and very very fundamental what challenges are faced when trying to help children understand science for example in areas like environmental health and climate change which have become significant talking points on the continent normally the challenges are numerous one the parental background some of these children were not opportune to have come across different items that are related to climate climate change or that are related to sciences at their various homes why because of their parental background the the low income of their parent or maybe by nature by the possible the nature that the muslim of their parent were not opportune to go to the school more especially here in africa but so you cannot compare those students with parental background children with parental background who came from a family that their family are well educated you cannot compare them with the other ones so what that is one of the basic challenges and another challenge is this is, issue of instructional materials you see sometimes you need to as a teacher you need to ask them to bring along some of this uh, some object from home and you discuss some sort of uh, those object with them at class these are the object that are available within their environment they are used to it for example you can ask them what do you use at home in cooking if you are do want to do something that has to do with the climate change what do you use at home in cooking if they use firewood then wh- why using firewood what did they notice they will ask you that they will tell you that they notice uh, the release of smoke in the atmosphere so what is the smoke what is the effect of the smoke so you start from there at their own level to find out more about how to encourage and sustain children's interest in science dr umbuvi highlights some behavioral and teaching approaches teachers can adopt first uh, the, the teacher or the facilitator must be very knowledgeable on the subject he should also be very passionate uh, because he's a mentor and they should look up uh, uh, up and see that he is as a good mentor teaching by example and by what he says he must be learner friendly and approachable what is learner friendly uh, like a friend yeah you you make your your learners or students your friends yeah they should not fear you as in uh, and then he should be very accommodative accept them just allow them to make mistakes and even when they, you ask them questions and they get it wrong don't yeah just guide them uh, be accommodative and they sh- it should also be a- able to relate uh, the science with the daily life every time he is teaching a topic he should try to link it with the, with the daily life how does it apply with the daily life So just to touch on something you said there uh Dr. Mbuvi is that a teacher should be friendly towards a student towards the child and this is something that is a bit of a different concept from when I was a child where the teacher was an authoritative figure and the issue of friendliness really wasn't that encouraged or emphasized on but now you're saying for the children in today's society on the African continent uh things perhaps are a little bit different for example here in Kenya you're saying part of what you're teaching teachers is to be friendly uh to the students and that would be a good element for the teacher to have yes 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 that, exactly that the learner in in the inquiry based learning you need the the learner to uh, be curious you need to create curiosity on the learner and if the this the learner is fearful it's impossible for him even to express uh, himself so that friendship is very important you allow them to think freely and accommodate yeah even the errors they do you just guide them and tell them yeah we are we, yes maybe probably a good attempt you should have uh, uh, maybe you should think it this other way is like you you are directing you 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 are guiding you are not uh, the source of everything but you are guide and uh, that is the approach that you can create an environment where they now drive their learning then the other thing is the teacher should also uh, have an, a, a network of uh, experts that he, he can use to to 
uh, as an example, yeah, to you know, one of the aspects that, that I, I've seen with learners is if they can, there's a concept in, in, the, in the West about shadowing. If a, if, a, if a student wants to be a chemist and you can have a, a, a resource of people who are chemists, maybe in the industry, you can use them to come and talk to, the, to those students and tell them that uh, in my profession, I do this and this, I apply. When they connect that with what they are aspiring to do, then uh, it makes the learning enjoyable for them. Availability and access to teaching materials and resources can make children develop a love for learning science. Yetunde discusses alternatives for cases of limited accessibility. Science in itself must be made real to the, the learners, right? And how can we do this? We need to have good teaching methods. We need to have the resources in the classroom, which means that um, in the event that we don't have the big you know, labs or stuff, we need to be able to improvise, right? What do we have within the environment that the teacher can use in the classroom to support or help, you know, the learner um, to learn, right? I, I, um, I'm going to mention a, f a few things here. Um, our teachers need to become creative, right? We need to be able to encourage um, um, and stimulate or rather, yes, yeah, stimulate some form of interaction, right? For the child or the learner to think, right? The child needs to, in, we need to start to, as a teacher, we need to inspire them. We need to get them to think. It's not about um, um, getting them to memorize or recite, right? So we need to get the teacher, you know, to be somebody else. How can I stimulate teaching in the classroom? I'll start with um, what we do in um, in the early childhood education, right? In early childhood education for Nigeria as a country, it is play-based, right? So we encourage that go into the world of the child, right? Get him or her to think, right? Have that experience, have that feeling inside of them. Get that child or the learner, right? The teacher should be able to get the child or the learner to to bring out what is inside of them, right? They are curious. Learners or children, are starting from the very early um, years, they are very curious, right? There's something inside of them. How can we motivate them to learn? How can we nurture their curiosity? So as a teacher, we need to get a strategy such that we nurture that curiosity which um, the child already has, right? Um, second uh, point I want to say, we need to be able to, we need to, as teachers, start to allow the learners to speak, right? We need, um, yes, we're teachers, but we're there to, to guide them, not necessarily direct them, right? So we need to learn to listen to the children, well, to the learners. I, I think um, I'll prefer to say learners rather than um, children. Of course, um, we might somehow use it um, interchangeably, but then... We need to learn to listen, right? Sometimes they have questions. Yes, we as teachers, teachers might have what they know already, but let's listen to the child because there's something that they're trying to get out, you know? And then we need to be able to, to facilitate that sense of um, of inquiry, right? We know all the concepts, or oh, if you if you do, if you put um, A plus B, she'll give you this, the right angle triangle is this, is that. But then there can be other ways that we can facilitate, that we can support, you know, getting them um, the sense of inquiry of, of the child, right? Like simple things like um, how do we uh, how do we get um, the colors, right? How are colors um, made, right? If we, if we mix um, X and Y color, it gives us this, right? We shouldn't just um, come out with a text and say, oh, this is um, A plus B is C, or you add them. Um, is it yellow and this? It gives you that. The primary colors, the secondary colors. But allow them to explore, you know, by themselves. Look at water. How does water change its state? Allow the child to experiment. You have a bowl of water. Maybe put it in the, um, on the fire or something. Allow it to boil. Let them see it. You can teach, you know, your... They will never forget that, 
right? That is one. And then when the water boils, allow it to cool, put it in the fridge, and then it becomes iced again. So you're teaching science, but it's in an interesting way. The child will never forget. Yetinde also emphasizes the importance of sharing ideas among African countries to make science engaging for children. The importance of um, collaboration cannot be overemphasized as well, because what's the use of um, having knowledge that you cannot share, right? In country, with other countries, very important, right, that um, we collaborate right from the ECE of the primary and then also secondary teachers. Right. Um, in country, there are different um, associations for teachers. There's different associations for teachers of specific subjects. Right. And they're not just within country. Also in other countries, you have English language teachers that have an association globally. Also in country, exchange ideas. Right. We cannot um, say too much about that. As in, I mean, it's very important and necessary for us to understand. The world is um, now very small, right? Children from Nigeria are interacting with children in other countries. So why should our teachers not do the same, right? So getting um, our curricula um, together, strengthened, it needs to be benchmarked. Look at other countries. What are they doing well? Um, what are the new inventions or, or new things um, for teacher training programs? We have our teacher guides in Nigeria. How can we benchmark it um, against other countries to see that we are at par so that when our um, learners meet at international exams, they're able to, uh, they're, they're as strong as they can be. We have learning assessment, right? Which is, um, yes, we have our own in-country but we have other international assessments where our learners would also be assessed. So why should our teachers not be collaborating yet? So, um, for example, I know UNESCO, um, they've launched um, several initiatives um, to, promote, um, um, to promote collaboration, also for UNICEF, uh, for, in order to strengthen foundational learning um, skills. We have the um, foundational learning and learn literacy and numeracy um, hub, right, which is available for everybody, learners, teachers, parents, um, CSOs, NGOs, we can all go on there. We have webinars every now and again. We share ideas. So all of this is um, very essential and very important for us to share knowledge and resources such that we can also improve the quality of um, what we are giving for effective education and a conducive learning environment, Dr. Umbuvi identifies loopholes in Africa's education system that require attention from school authorities and the government. I think um, for me, the major challenge that we are having is uh, human resource. We need a very competent uh, a human resource that can uh, run with the new concept of uh, inquiry-based uh, learning. So we keep we need to keep on retooling our teachers and uh, our shift uh, to to this new. Of course, uh, that uh, mode of uh, learning also requires more resources and more time, more time actually, because you you need the the learner to drive his uh, learning. Well, we need we also have challenges creating interest. And partly that's where now the the facilitator comes in because he needs to create that interest to the learner so that uh, the learner can be interested and, and learn on his own. And that requires more time and requires uh, classes that are le le uh, smaller than we are currently having. Uh, another challenge we are seeing in our schools and even in our universities is the gap we are having between uh, the learners that have access to internet and the others that have no access because we are having almost like two uh, type of learners. Global learners or global citizens that are exposed to the, the world 
and others that are local. And you as a facilitator, you need to know how you, the level of the learners and, or, and where you will pick them. And we need uh, facilitators who are aware of the global challenges of today. Uh, this includes uh, global warming, this includes uh, pollution that we are having uh, in, in uh, and uh, water pollution particularly. And therefore, we need uh, this facilitator to pass that. From a early age of uh, the students in science as they grow, so that we can grow citizens who are very aware of the challenges that we face as, uh, uh, as the world today and are able to come up with sustainable solutions to, to those uh, problems in the long run. Yetunde outlines UNICEF's measures to enhance children's love for science and science learning. She talks about how community actors can be involved in this process. So many um, challenges, but um, I, we all almost know what the challenges are. So we're looking at um, what can we do, right, to fix what the issues are. Um, I'll, I'll speak broadly and just mention as I speak some of the things that um, UNICEF is also supporting to do. First thing, um, without adequate teaching and learning um, resources in the classroom or around the learning areas, it's, um, it's almost impossible to teach or to get that um, learning across appropriately. So what, um, what we need to do as a government, as a people, and when we're talking about um, government, yes, it's not just um, government, government, as in um, maybe the Federal Ministry of Education or the State Universal Basic Education Board. Parents, communities are also active stakeholders in education, right? So we also need to talk about the parents, the traditional um, establishment, the religious establishment. We should be able to provide some of these teaching and learning um, materials, support in if it's to give um, centers that can be used by the teachers to learn, right? I'll um, defer again to the, the play-based approach for early childhood education. We use or we encourage the teachers and the facilitators to use materials that are readily available within the local area, right? So this way, we're not talking about um, constraints um, on finances or budget, but we have um, stones, we have bottles, we have bottle tops within the environment that we can use, use it to teach mathematics, use it to teach the weather, get a bowl um, of water, put it out there. In the morning time, you have the, the circle time, you're all outside with the learners, with the children, I mean, with the learners, with the teachers, we're all out there. We're experiencing what the weather is like. We're learning science, right? Infrastructure is not just um, governments to build. We have the state, um, the, the schools-based management committees, right, the SBMCs. We have um, high-level um, women advocates in some of the programs that um, UNICEF has supported government to do. They are there. They also support build infrastructure, get um, resources from within the community and then um, use some of this, right, to ensure that um, teaching and learning continues to take place. That's all from us at Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SciDevNet website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst with editing by Ogechi Ekeanyao and Titilapwe Fadari and reporting by Michael Kaloki. I'm Ogechi Ekeanyao. Until next time, goodbye. Africa Science Focus is produced by SciDevNet and distributed in association with your local radio station. This podcast was supported by the Science Granting Council's initiative, which aims to strengthen the institutional capacities of 18 public science funding agencies in sub-Saharan Africa.